I'm Michael Sirkan, a technical product manager with AWS. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about the database migration service serverless. This is a new edition of DMS that allows that automatically provisions and scales capacity based on your need. And as with the standard DMS, DMS serverless continues to provide the ability for customers to move their data from one database, from a source, to a target, a target database or a or any or other types of places as well where you might want to put that data, such as an S3 data lake or Redshift for doing analytics. And DMS Serverless makes this much easier than in the past because it is automatically going to scan your source database and help determine the optimal capacity to set up. And it will then change that capacity based on the volume of, of data transactions that you have over time. And we'll dive right into the demonstration here. And first, we're going to look at our sample databases that we have created. Because, of course, that's very important, is to have your, your source and target have to exist in order for DMS serverless to work. And here we have a sample Oracle test database. And we have a bunch of tables in it. And we also have a Postgres um, database as our target. So you can, in DMS, you can configure your endpoints, your target and source endpoints. And DMS serverless allows that just like the standard DMS. And you'll see there's a new option in the DMS console for serverless replications. And serverless replications is a new concept that we have uh, for DMS serverless. And you can, and, and each one is managed independently. Unlike standard DMS, where you'd create an instance and then you manage each of your tasks on that instance with DMS serverless, you create a replication and define what, what uh, will go through defining the resources for that. And you'll see there's a lot of similarities to DMS serverless and standard DMS. We're going to give this replication a name. And you can have as many replications as you want between the same source database and the target database. And we're choosing our endpoints. And these are the, it's the same way you define endpoints with DMS standard. In fact, if you already have endpoints defined for DMS standard, you can use the same ones in DMS serverless. And you'll see we can choose we want full load or we want change data capture as well. And we have many other options with DMS. We're handling the lob sizes whether we want validation, data validation on, whether and we're going to turn on CloudWatch, so we're going to record uh, logs in CloudWatch. We have uh, options for mapping tables of your databases. We You can do filters, selection rules, and we even have transformation rules. These are these are all the, the same capa rich capabilities that customers have come to know and love with the standard DMS. And we're going to here create a, a, a schema mapping. And we're going to create a small little transformation rule to uh, have a, a, a change the name of the schema from in the source and the target. But of course, you there's you can have a lot of these these types of rules in your replications that you set up, and we set up our network connectivity, our uh, set up the VPC again standard things that you do with uh, in DMS in the past, and we also have a single and multiple availability zone for failover of DMS in. Um, and we're going to select multiple a multi AZ. Now this is the here is a new 
thing that you will see, which is you define the minimum and maximum capacity units. So DMS serverless has this concept of DMS capacity units or DCUs. And so what you will do is decide what the minimum and the maximum is that you would allow. Uh, and then DMS serverless will automatically scale between that, but not exceed the thresholds on either the bottom or the top over time as we scale the capacity up or down. We recommend choosing the maximum options, or so you choose the minimum, and by default, it's going to be one DCU, which is as low as you can go for the minimum and for the maximum. We, we're going to pick eight right now, but generally we recommend you pick the highest you can. Um, even though you pick a, hard, a large, you might pick a very large capacity, keep in mind that DMS is only going to scale to these large capacities if it's needed. And so uh, for the vast majority of customers, they, they see uh, variances in their traffic volumes through the day. So you're not going to be at top capacity all the time. So as you can see, now we've started the replication. It was showing us the status progress. And now we can, we can control this change data capture, which is the replication. And we're going to say we don't want it to, uh, we don't want it to stop. We're going to have it continue once the, the data is initially copied. So if there's new transactions coming, those would come across as well. And now we can watch the status of the replication as it's going on. And it tells us that it's initializing right now, but, and it goes through the various phases of, of setting up. When you first start a replication, it has to, to scan your source database, determine what capacity to provision. So it takes a little while for, the, for your replication to get going. But once that capacity is set up, then it will, then it will go pretty smoothly. And when we auto scale and we transition between one capacity type and, and a, when, we're, when we're scaling your capacity of DCUs up or down, there is about a five minute delay or a pause in, the, in your replications as we scale it up or down. And now it's preparing the metadata. And pretty soon here, we will see it start to actually replicate the data, which is the thing that we want to see. <laughs> well, and, and we do a full load first. We chose to do a full load plus a CDC for this demo, um, which, and the full load is the initial dump of all the data that copies it all. And then, oh, and there we go. This was a very small data set. And so now it's completed, it's finished its replication or the, the full load is completed and CDC is now running for additional data that might, additional transactions that might, that might occur. And we can see that, that eight DCUs were provisioned And we can look at details of our replication. You can see the ARN, the dates, the times, the capacities that were used, what was set. We can look at statistics of how much data was transmitted. There, was, there were 8,000 rows that were moved across. The elapsed time was one second. <laughs> so there doesn't take a lot to move 8,000 rows. It's pretty simple they didn't have huge lobs and if, when we go look at the at our data we can see that it actually moved the that we see the data in our in our target and we're looking at what was in our oracle database getting a view of that yeah this is just this is we're just using a standard tool for um, for querying databases to, ch to check them out.
And now we can go back and look at, at some of the monitoring that had happened and we can see the capacity utilization. So it started off, of course, there was no capacity, then we provisioned it and and it would and it's still running at the at uh, eight eight DCUs, and there we can see the definitions in a JSON file as well. And that's bas basically how easy it is to do a migration with DMS serverless. You set up a serverless replication, each of which are managed independently. So each serverless replication that we set up, we define the minimum and maximum capacity, which is wonderful because if you think about standard DMS, where you have all these tasks on an instance that you set up, they some tasks might not be very busy, other tasks would be busy. And in DMS serverless, because each one is being managed independently, will scale resources for each tap for each of your replications as it, as it needs it. So if one replication doesn't need very high capacity because there's no transactions, we're going to scale it down. And if another one needs a lot, we'll scale it up. And DMS Serverless is available today. You can go and try it in your environment and see how well it works for you. And it does support uh, m many of the same sources and targets as standard DMS. You should check our documentation. There are some gaps in functionality for the first version of DMS serverless that is coming out. So uh, you will also see more of the sources and targets supported over time as we, as we flesh out all of the functionality of DMS serverless. But there's a large number that are already supported. So for most customers' use cases, they're already there. And DMS serverless is going to help you better manage your, your resources over time, rather than you have to constantly keep checking whether you, whether you're you need more capacity for your replications and or in most cases we have a lot of customers who keep their capacity with standard dms really high to handle spikes but then it's it's over provision for a long periods of time and dms serverless is going to handle that for you and ensure that you're only using the capacity that you really need at that time and Go test this with your use case and see how well DMS serverless can save you time and money. And that is how easy it is to do a replication with DMS serverless. Unlike standard DMS, we didn't have to spend a lot of time deciding what capacity we wanted to set up. DMS serverless automatically determined the best capacity to provision at the beginning, and it scaled it up as well as we as we went on. In most customer environments, in use cases, you're going to be running this for days or weeks or months, and you will see a wide ver variety of capacity changes as the volume of your data changes over time. In this small little demo, we didn't have a long <laughs> variability in the data flows as you would normally see. And DMS serverless is available right now. It supports a large number of sources and targets for many different use cases. You can check our documentation to confirm that it that we support the use case that you have. And we continually keep adding more sources and targets over time. We keep expanding the number of options and of, pl of places where you can use DMS for moving your data. And DMS serverless is available right now uh, in the DMS console. And it's a, we, it's a great opportunity for you to go and try it in your specific use case. It's easy to get started to see how well that it would work for your scenario. All right. I think what's amazing is AWS database migration services. 
DNS. Um, not only is it serverless, which it automatically provisions, scales, and manages resource to make database migrations easier. I mean, let's let's think about it. When you're moving petabytes of data through a database, you know that could take a lot of energy, time, and effort. But I think with serverless, and especially with DMS, you know, it's really helping uh, kind of lift that heavy load of having to do that. Yeah, it's serverless. Absolutely, you know, is going to be cost effective because it's going to scale to yeah. what your needs are, yeah. and then also just the the time savings. I think is the time is huge and I significant. Mean, I, I know AWS customers would say, "Hey, no, the money." But when you're looking at time <laughs> and you're not having to stay up and you know watch it and make sure it's doing what it needs to do, I think you know that's huge to me. Totally, yeah, I think so. Yeah.